Introducing kids to the realm of crippling RG since 1998. Hey guys, Eric here, and after six hours and about four broken N64 analog control sticks later, I finally done it. I reviewed Mario Party 1. And let me tell you, revisiting this was fun. <laughs> Cars would never heal. I mean, one day they might. One day they might heal. Ah, oh, no. Damn it. Oh, I mean, oh, maybe next time. No. Damn it. Haha. Oh. <laughs> so, so much fun. Ha. 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 This game, let me just tell you, is a piece of work. So the premise is that you have Mario and crew, these guys, are arguing about who the real superstar is. They talk about the strongest, talk about the most clever, they even get Yoshi called up for maybe being the best superstar. No, not you, Toad. <laughs> On a real side note though, I love Yoshi in this game. He is my bae. So anyways, Mario and them, they're all like, we need blood games. Okay, okay, fine. They don't say it like that, but they do pretty much talk about competing and see who is the best out of like, what, the six of them? You know, no one else really counts in this current game in the universe, so, yeah. So they all go, just run off to a happy magical pipe, jump on into the island, and that's where adventure begins. So the game is set, they go jump into their magic pipe, and they go adventure on a new magical island for mini-games and contests and challenges to complete their tasks and see who's a real superstar. On the main screen, you have the warp pipe to play the main board game. You have the option house to be able to turn on and off different sound effects and items such as the record player and the parrot. You have the bank that will enable you to turn on and off different items you bought from the shop. You have the shop for buying said items. You have mini game island raft to go into a different uh, single player game, pretty much you know runs off lives and coins and stuff like that. And you have the mini game house. My favorite random mini game things from this game is the uh, Mega Fly Guy. The Mega Fly Guy. It is is a little stupid toy where you go and you spin a control stick for as fast as you can for 10 seconds, and depending on how many spins you get, depends on how far you know how far it can get around the room. And as a kid, I was obsessed with trying to make a full circle around the room. That was like my goal, and I've never made it. I've hurt my I've hurt my hand legitimately repeatedly from trying to accomplish this goal. But that is one of my favorite things from this room. Also, you're wondering the max number of spins you can get on the Mega Fly Guy is about 75. That was done to a task bot, and the uh, max ever done by a human so far has been 61. And my best is 60 spins. Star. Now in the shop you can buy a few items that fill out that great RNG gameplay that you're dying for. Dice brought from the store can now be activated randomly appears for both use for you and the computer players, which means that there's going to be some games where your computer gets more bonuses than you do. And the whole game's end up getting turned on its head just because they got the bonus dices and you got those minus ones all the time. There are dice you can unlock for you know, using our gameplay that randomly show up. Some of the dices are, you have the plus block, which pretty much gives you as many coins as they end up rolling on that dice. You have the minus block, which means you lose as many coins you end up rolling on that dice. You have the speed block, which pretty much only ends up showing about anything from uh, 8 to 10, which is really good. You have the slow block, which pretty much only ends up giving you the 1 to 3 area of the dice, so it kind of sucks when you get that one. You have the warp block, which warps you to a random place to any other character, at least I think it's random. Personally, I don't know. I feel like it's unfair when computer keeps switching me, so yeah. And finally, you got the event block. And the event block allows you to pretty much, it randomly summons either Boo or uh, Koopa Trooper or Bowser. And all those things together makes a really interesting set of dice. These dice do randomly show up during gameplay. And you have no control on who gets used or what gets used. They're not items, they are just randomly placed item blocks up here. Or place your dice. You can buy some other random items. Um, just like I said before, the Mega Fly Guy, you can also get a record player to play some music. And also you can get a um, like little parrot that plays random sound effects 
off the main characters and villains that are in the game. It's pretty cool. It does it randomly, though, unfortunately, so you can't really pick what you want. But even having the option to listen to the music and the sound effects is a really good one. The theme in this game, to me, is some of the best theme. And that's what I think saves this game a lot. You have the jungles of DK. You have the, the Luigi, the mechanical parts. You have the Peach's giant birthday cake. Jesus, with a cake that big, no wonder Peach is always boasting about making it. You even have stuff like Yoshi Islands, Wario's Canyon Blast, and um, you know Mario's like freaking Rainbow Castle, which is really awesome when they have this set. You also have two unlockable levels, such as Bowser's Magma Castle and also the Internal Star map. Each level has its own unique way of transversing it. You you have ways of like with the DK level I was saying before the jungle, they have like Indiana Stone Boulder, like you know, it's going across and avoid them, your character runs. You have a uh, moving gate for Luigi using the level, which is annoying as hell. You have uh, like piranha plants on Peach's uh, birthday cake. You, you plant them and it stands up and I mean, and, like when character lands, you bite, bite and get like the free coins off of that. I think it's just really interesting how each of these levels are different. Now, yeah, some of them are a little irritating. Like some of them can't for Yoshi Island um, switch over for going over Island Island. It's annoying, but it, it's what makes it unique. Because if these were easy maps all the time, it wouldn't be a reason to use it to play with other people. It's a challenge of, it's a challenge of memorizing these mechanics and using them to your benefit. Now, with... Also, the main board game you can play with your friends. There's also a couple other unique game sets. You have the uh, Minigame Island, which is a one-player deal. You have a live set, you have different save points, and your deals go through all 50 minigames to make it to the end. Once you complete all of those, you get a Covenant Crown for that, which is really cool. I think this is really fun for people who, like me, play by themselves a lot, a lot of these games. And being able to challenge myself through these minigames, it's really fun. I will say it's unfair, because <laughs> the games are always set to very hard CPU. So, yeah, the first good one's kind of easy, like you've been playing Bumper Ball, and Bumper Ball took me forever to beat. Because you have to knock them all off in order to win, there is no draw, so, yeah. There is also a like challenge coin type map where it's shaped like in the shape of a star and you and other friends challenge each other and whoever gets the most coins win. Whoever gets the most amount of coins in this game set is the winner, which is great because now it's all about focus on who can play the best minigames. It's all about focus who can who is technically skilled enough to play through these games. In the minigame room, you're actually able to unlock all your minigames that you get. And pretty much this is the only part I really didn't like about the game. I felt like the minigames cost too much. I felt like it was a little bit grindy. I felt that the, the price economics were way too too far out of range with a lot of this stuff compared to how many coins you could reasonably get when playing Mario Party. Now, fair enough, over a certain amount of time when playing with friends, you could get enough coins to unlock all the things. But when you're like me, maybe you have one other friend, maybe two. Other than trying to cheese it and just trying to grind out like the minigame um, challenge map, it's really hard to get enough coins to pay off a lot of these different minigames to buy all of them. The game will consist of four players. You pick who you want to play as a human or computer. You pick how many turns you're in to play it on and what level. And the game will pretty much let you select what you want to start on. When dropped into a new land, you start with everyone else, hitting dice to see who goes first, and you're given 10 coins. When the game starts, a random spot's picked for the stars, so you can buy it for 20 coins. The number of stars collected over a chance of the number of coins overall in the end dictates on who is first place, who is second, third, and fourth. Each turn consists of everyone rolling their dice, moving around the board, and depending on what mark you sit on, which would color your character red, blue, green, dictates on how a map you end up playing on against each other. There's a free-for-all, a 2v2, and a 1v3 set. They are all randomly picked by roulette when selected. And after the turns are done, the players are all called on stage, and this is where the real fun of RNG comes in. You see, at this point, the game gives you stars randomly for random things. 
high coin counts, most mini games won, most times stepped on, happening spots, stuff like that. And then the winner is picked. So let's say you're playing with DK, and your buddy DK is just like kind of trailing behind the whole time in the game. And the match ends, and then we gets called up on stage, and the, the different stars are awarded. And you kind of wondering, okay, cool, I'm in first place, I should be fine, I'm a couple stars ahead. And then your buddy DK, fourth place, you know what, he gets a happening star. Boom, one star up. You're like, oh, that's kind of unsettling, but it's fine. He, he didn't do so well in most of the games, so he should be fine. But then all of a sudden it's like, well, what about saved coins? Like, saved coins, he knows DK never really spent his coins to do anything. Boom, another star right there. And you're like, crap, this this can't be happening, I'm going to lose. And last but not least, you get the most useless freaking star landing on red spots. And boom, and there, there we go, another star. Boom, DK wins. Congratulations, you just relinquish your realm to second place. On a quick note, I think some of the game mechanics are there just to piss off you and your friends. If you pass by Boo, he'll allow you to steal coins for free, and to steal a star for 50 coins. There are some Bowser space that pretty much will flare up when anyone has anxiety when the choices come up, and it happens to pretty much give you choices like, give me all your coins, or let's play a game, and if anyone loses, you give me 10 to 50 coins. This can easily kill someone's run when they have it going. But the thing is that Bowser always wins. I mean, he does have a 100 star, 1000 coin presence, so, I mean, there's that. Oh. Never mind. And now for a fun fact. Although no lawsuits were filed, around 90 complaints were received by the New York Attorney General Office, and Nintendo of America eventually agreed to the settlement. This settlement consists of providing gloves for anyone who have hurt their hands while playing the game, and paying state legal fees up to $75,000. At the time, providing gloves for the estimated 1.2 million users of the game might have been affected by the cost of Nintendo up to $80 million. Luckily for Nintendo, this wasn't the case, and very few people applied to get the gloves from them. Mario Party has not been re-released for the Virtual Console. Nintendo skipped it and instead of re-releasing it, they released Mario Party 2, which was later on to be available on the Wii U Virtual Console as well. Also, I didn't know if I was going crazy or not, but when playing this game, I could I would have swore there's a practice mode. I booted up two just to make sure two has practice mode, so I was just going insane looking and ended up doing some research and found out one never had a practice mode. I don't know why I thought it did for mini games. Maybe I got spoiled from the other games, but it was just like almost like the Mandela effect going on, where you're like, I would have swore it had a, a practice mode for the minigames, but it didn't. So just want to get that out there that I was going crazy for like a good 20 minutes trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. And now for an Eric story time. Okay, so as I was recording footage for this game, I want to show everything unlocked. I grinded through the minigame raft I, uh, island, I end up going through it, trying to unlock and get coins set up. The list had a lot of coins, some of them as high as 300, 400 coins each. And even with, you know, with doing control trick by switching everyone to um, human players at the end to get their coins, and challenging the CPU players to like human battles across, that it was just it was just becoming a super big grind and it was becoming slow. So there it was. I was like, you know what? I, I can go and I can use Game Shark and I can I can get 99 coins for all the players and I can change the controls across and end up collecting off of my switch over the last turn. And I can use the casino box and the casino box allows you to get like 2x or minus. 2x coins. I'm like, okay, cool. I can gamble that chance to save up enough coins to get these mini games unlocked. I'm like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get it done. This is like the last thing I want to do for this game to get 100% complete. And let me tell you what, that, that did not work out. So after grinding for this game for the better part of a six hour day, and then removing the game shark after I was finishing and unlocking everything I want to do, I got this screen. I was super sad, to be honest. I mean, I'm happy I got enough footage for this review, but I was so upset when I when I saw the thing get corrupted. So in conclusion, Mario Party original N64 really holds up well. I, I personally didn't think it would have. I thought it would have been more lackluster because it only has 50 minigames. I thought it would have been a little bit lackluster with the, the limited gameplay options for it, but it, it really did not. I mean, the mechanics on the board, honestly, is one of the biggest saving grace. The minigames... All felt very unique. Yes, yeah, some of them are throwaways, but you only have like a few of those compared to like the newer iterations of Mario Party, where I feel like they're just more throwing stuff against the wall to see what sticks. And I mean, like, yeah, fine. The RNG mechanic sucks, but let's be honest though, there's a lot more things worse than RNG when playing with some friends. And yes, I'm talking about you, Miles. I'm talking about you. Okay, you you somehow make it from fourth place to first all the time. You had two stars, and you got all three bonus stars, you end up getting five and beating all of us. I don't even know how, how your 4D chess works. I don't even know how in your brain you, you calculate ahead of time how to win. But it's insane, 
It's ridiculous and wow. Just wow every time. Still love you though. Thank you so much guys for watching to the end. It means a lot to me. Um, I of course always enjoy making these videos. So just want to give my appreciation out there. Um, as always, uh, feel free to comment below on any of your favorite mini games from Mario Party or even the future ones I'm going to be doing soon. Uh, next video is going to be Mario Party 2. And if you guys have any suggestions or anything you want me to look at, feel free to comment and uh, I might review it on there. So take care guys and uh, have a great day.